Hi, I'm Dan Q and this is the vlog version of my blog post, Do What You're Bad At. If you, if like me, you prefer blogs to vlogs, look down there, you'll find a link to the original, where you'll find it has links to other articles, silly captions under the pictures and all kinds of other good stuff. Or if you actually prefer seeing and hearing me, listen on. There are a great many things that I am profoundly bad at. One thing I'm bad at, but trying to get better at, is being more accepting of the fact that there are things that I am bad at. That's a bit better. I'm pretty bad in a pub quiz. I'm bad at operating my pizza oven without somehow destroying cookware. I'm especially bad at learning languages. Human languages, not programming languages. I'm appallingly bad at surfing. Every time my work leans in that direction, I'm reminded how bad I am at React. I've repeatedly shown I'm bad at keeping on top of my blogging to an extent that I've on several occasions declared bankruptcy on my drafts folder. I'm just bad at things. No way. That's not quite true. Thinking back, as a young kid, I was a smart cookie if I can say so myself. I benefited from being an only child and getting lots of attention from a pair of clever parents, but I was also pretty bright and a quick learner with an interest in just about anything I, um, I encountered. That made me appear naturally talented and uh, pushed on by the praise of teachers and peers. I discovered that I could coast quite easily through school. But a flair for things will only carry you so far and you can't rest on your laurels forever. A problem with not having to work hard in education is you don't ever get to learn how to learn. I got bitten by that in higher education when I found that I actually had to work getting bigger concepts to stick in my head. It's also harder when you get older. I was around 40 when I finished my master's degree and that it was very obvious to me that I was having to work hard to get ideas to stick in. In any case, a side effect of these formative experiences is that I grew into an adult who strongly differentiated between two distinct kinds of activities. There were things that I'm good at, either because of talent or because I'd already done all the hard learning work uh, for them. Uh, I experienced people's admiration and respect when I practiced these things and it didn't take much effort to stay on top of them. And there were things that I'm bad at because I didn't have a natural aptitude for them because I hadn't yet put the time into learning them. We don't often give adults external reinforcement to congratulate them for trying hard and I'd become somewhat addicted to being seen as being already awesome at these things. So I shied away from ever doing any of these things. The net result was I missed out on opportunities to learn new things simply because I didn't want to be seen as going through the amateur phase from one to the other. This I'm bad at new things attitude fed into the imposter syndrome I experienced when I first started at Automatic. I worked for the Bodleian Libraries at the University of Oxford for eight and a half years and leaving there might have helped stimulate a change in me. I'd carved out a role at the Bodleian defined by the things I knew and understood best. But now advancing my career would require that I learnt new skills. Beyond that, my new employer, Automatic, has a creed culture which really strongly promotes continuous personal development. I've vlogged and blogged about that before. Uh, moreover, my coach has been great at encouraging me towards a growth mindset. But perhaps the biggest stimulus for me to keep actively learning, even when it's hard, especially when it's hard, was the COVID-19 pandemic. During the second lockdown here in the UK, I went slightly crazy with cabin fever and had this wild notion that I was going to try to learn to play the piano. Now, it turns out I wasn't the only person who thought this, and uh, I've got some links from the post linked below about how the pandemic did strange things to us all. But in any case, I decided to learn to play the piano. Now, I've got no real experience of music. I didn't even get to play a recorder in primary school, and I've certainly got no talent for it. 
I can hear well enough to know how awful my singing is, but that's more of a curse than a blessing. Also, I discovered that just about every beginner's piano book and all the online courses tend to come from the assumption that you're going to want to start sitting at a piano and get a feel for it, to learn heuristics. And um, I've learned from my experience of trying to learn languages that that doesn't work for me. Now, a great thing about being an adult, of course, is I can choose the learning strategies that fit me best. And in this case, I wanted a theoretical background before I sat in front of the keyboard. So I signed up for a free online music theory course with the Open University. And then after that, I started on a beginner's piano book, John Thompson's Easiest Piano Course, which we actually bought for the children. Uh, then I graduated to the first 50 Disney songs you should play on piano. Um, I know my Disney songs quite well. And the thinking was that I would be able to tell how bad I was by listening to myself play. After that, I've worked my way into a, um, a, a, the Essential Einaudi Islands collection, which I'm still struggling with. He's got huge hands. It's a real stretch. And plus he does strange things with time signatures. Beautiful piano music, though. Anyway, I was given a book by JTA, um, which uh, inspired me to try to learn to improvise, and I'm making some progress with that. About 90% of my piano time nowadays is what I would call Dan Mucks About in B minor. Most days, I don't get more than 10 minutes practice on the piano, but little by little, day by day, over the last two years, that's been enough to learn. Nowadays, even my inner critic, my inner perfectionist, can tolerate hearing myself play, and while I fully know that I will never be as good as, say, the average 80-year-old pianist on YouTube, I'm still content in my limited capacity. It's because I'm trying to cultivate a wonder syndrome. Wonder syndrome is an amazing term come up with by my, my partner Ruth. Please follow the link to the blog post and then follow the link from there to her blog post and so on and so forth um, to learn more about it. But the essence is this. Wonder syndrome is a way of reframing imposter syndrome to try to gain a mindset of growth and continuous development. And I love it. In any case, if I'm trying to cultivate a wonder syndrome, I need to stay alert for things I'm bad at that I could conceivably be better at if I was just brave enough to try to learn. Nowadays, I'm quite proud to be an embarrassing amateur pianist, which at long last I am able to see is better than being a non-pianist. And off the back of that experience, I'm going to be trying to spend more time doing things I'm bad at and I'd encourage you to do the same. I'm Dan Q, and this has been my vlog version of a blog post I wrote. There'll be a link down there for those of you who, like me, agree that blogs are just better than vlogs for most things. But I'm glad you stuck around to watch this anyway. See ya.